Amen. You know, uh, uh, just, just a quick question. Uh, how many of you are in full-time ministry? You that didn't raise your hand, you're, you're deceived. You are a full-time minister. You, you're, not a part-time, you're not a part-time Christian, are you? No, well, he has called us out of darkness, translated us into the light. Here's the light that needs to be turned on in our life. That God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. For he gave pastors and preachers and teachers and all those guys right, for, for a purpose. Why? For the equipping of the saints. For what? For the work of the ministry. So when you look at us and you say, well, you're the full-time ministry. No, actually, you are the full-time ministry. Our job is to equip you to minister. Well, well when do I get to be in the ministry? You're already in the ministry. Matter of fact, you you want to, you know, I, I want to be a leader. Well, let me tell you something. You either are or you aren't. And, and your last act of leadership was the way you acted last. Just spilling tea. <laughs> it's not really the message, but it sort of is. Uh, See, so you, you got to get in the Word. Look at your neighbor and say, you got you to be in the Word. Uh, John 15, 7, and TJ, uh, uh, you know, alluded to it a few minutes ago, if you abide in me, if you, if you live in my word, if, you, if you'll set up the tent, you know, drive in the stakes, quit, quit packing up and moving off my word every time the wind begins to blow. Have you noticed that in Tri-Cities, from time to time, the wind blows? I mean, is it nuts or what? You know, if, if, if your yard furniture isn't heavy, it's no longer yours. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's like, where'd that go? <laughs> that way. You know. Well, that's life. Life isn't going to be easy. Life isn't always going to be cake. But, you know, he said, man, you got to live this thing. You got to get this word to come alive. You got to get God's word in you. You know, it's like, where do you live, man? What, what is, what, where are you building your life on? What's close to you? Like, how long does it take you in the middle, in the middle of, a, of a battle, how long does it take you to come up with what God would say? You know, you know what's your heart on? What's your mind on? Or do you wait till they say you have cancer before you study healing? Or, or maybe you don't need no financial uh, foundation scripture for your life until you ain't got enough money to pay the bill. Or, or maybe, maybe, you know, you don't need a peace scripture until you're in the middle of the storm, and then you got to find something real quick. Well, maybe, maybe you should up your ask. Maybe you should stop living only for you, and, he, and, and not just get to the Word when you got a problem, but will you get so full of the Word that you are actually part of a solution to somebody else's problem? That's just one thought, that you might stop thinking so little about others, that you'd stop being so stingy, and, 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 and that, you, that you would begin, that you'd up your ass, God, I don't, want, I don't want you just to do a work in my life to make my life better. I mean, if God answered all your prayers right now, boom, right now, whose life would change? Yours or somebody else's? I mean, it's just something to think about. Man, if God answered my prayer right now, I'd have a brand new car. What? You know, up your ask. What if, what if you equipped yourself so that in any given moment, God could nudge you and you could speak life into it? What if you prepared yourself so that when you go to work and a coworker walks in, and, and, and it's obvious they're going through something. They begin to spill the tea. Okay. And you, but you, you, you hear it and you go, oh, wait, wait a minute. Do you know that the promises of God are true? They are called yes and amen. That means that God's promises are yours and mine right now. And if we live in that word and that word begins to live in us, that we can ask for stuff, ask what, it'll just come across your imagination. And even as it's coming across your imagination, God's really excited because he's like a creator. And that Bible, sa that Bible says that if we ask for something that doesn't exist, hey, not a problem. God will create it for you because he's kind of good at that stuff. 
Do you realize that the Bible says that if we abide in him and his words abide in us, that we can ask for things that don't exist, if it doesn't exist. If you happen to come up with something, if you come up with something that doesn't exist, but you're living in the word, you're submitted to the word, and, and, and the word is alive in you and it's changing the way you think, which will change the way you feel, which will change the choices you make, which will change the actions you perform, which will change the habits you develop, which will change the character that you possess, which will change the end result that you experience. See, well, I don't want to be a fanatic. What, do you want to be a loser? You want to, be, you want to go to like spiritual rotary class or something? You know, after a certain period of time, you ought not like think like people who don't know God. So fat. I wish you could see your faces. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe he's telling us this stuff. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be thinking like people who don't know God. You should be acting like somebody who ain't, who ain't even born again. I got the spirit that raised Christ from the dead in me, and he's really ticked. No, he ain't. And you got, you, you, got to, you, you, you got to spend enough time in this word. That's what he's talking about, living in the word. James said, if you, if you receive the word with a teachable spirit, it'll actually change the way you think. If God's word isn't changing the way you think, you're doing God's word wrong. Well, let me tell you what I think. I'm tired of hearing what you think. You, and you never want to ask me what I think. Ever. <laughs> Ever. What, is, what does God's word tell us to think? You know, as a believer, you don't have the right to think whatever you want. Well, I got my rights. Oh, show me that. Open up your book and show me that. The Bible says, think on these things. Remember that one? Philippians. Remember it? Whatsoever things are lovely or of a good report or just or pure, if they have virtue, if there's praise in there, here's how to think. And then, and then it has the audacity to say, don't think. These thoughts, matter of fact, when these thoughts come across your mind, beat them. Read your Bible. Discipline them. Put them into bondage. Take them into jail. Lock them up and never let that thought out again. See, you're not responsible for the thoughts that run through your mind, but you are responsible for the thoughts you let stay there. And it's like, hey, you know what? You got to live in me and let my word abide in you. And then you're going to get to this point that you'll just have an ima- ask what you will. It's like anything that you could imagine. Sometimes, sometimes there's something in you as you're doing the will of God that, that, that begins to cry out. I mean, you, you didn't even realize it. And, and, and I don't mean to make that sound weird or something, but I mean, it's, it's like a desire that begins to flow because you're, and, and you ain't got time to think about it because you're just so busy doing what God needs to be done. And you're doing, and God, but see, God's the creator. Anybody understand that? In the beginning, God created. And let me just tell you something. He didn't stop. He's still there, and he's still creating, and he's still saying, hey, let there be light. You got a dark spot? <laughs> Watch what I do with those. I mean, God's, wi- I mean, he, he's willing, excited. He's able right? And, and he's like, man, I want to create some stuff. How, how do I release that? What's the power position? Well, you live in the Word, and the Word lives in you. And then, uh, you, know, you know what it does is it, it puts God in the position. But see, what, what you have to do, what you have to do is you have to submit your life to God's Word, right? And all we have to do is say the word submit in church and look at the atmospheric change. I mean, we could be, yahoo, yahoo, running around with tambourines and streamers and, and bring up the word submit and fi- suddenly you, c- you can't find your tambo no more. <laughs> Somebody gone Rambo with your tambo. <laughs> Ooh, submission. I don't want to talk about submission. Okay, we're not going to talk about submitting to man. Let, how about we talk about submitting to God? Okay, because do you understand that's kind of important? I might suggest to you that sometimes when God tells you to submit to him, that he will also, he will also I'll say, ask you. He ain't asking. He's God. But, but, but he'll say, like, submit to that man. Well, who are you submitted to now, the man or to God? Well, in my submission to man, I have to be submitted, or in my submission to God, I have to be submitted to some men. Why? Because God told me to, and I'm submitted to God. 
I'm just, I mean, first, you just got to get this, but, but check this out. Check this out. It, it, it says, you got, a, you got a verse for me? It says uh, uh, that, that if you, sub, it, you know, submit to God, submit to God, check it out. Submit, everybody say submit to God. Oh, shoot, it's in the Bible. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. How do you know you have to submit to God? Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? That means you're going to have to do some stuff God tells you to. Everybody agree? Well, we're not in submission yet, yet. Because submission doesn't begin until there's disagreement. Now feel this real quick, and then we're going we're gonna to fly, okay? Submission doesn't begin until there's disagreement. Until, until you're in disagreement, you're in agreement. Well, why is there a differentiation? Because this is a power position. Submission is a power position. Why is it that when you hear the word submission, immediately you come up with 14 examples of people who have abused you or hurt you or wounded you or said no to you or, or, or didn't let you do what you want or whatever, and you got all these negative things. Well, well, because faith, according to Philemon, because you know your Bible, you know that Philemon, it's the sixth verse of which chapter? There's only one in the book of Philemon. Okay, and so it's chapter one, verse six, and it says the communication of your faith becomes effective by acknowledging the good things. So faith is activated and becomes effective when you acknowledge good things. So when all you acknowledge are the bad things, that's how you take the power of your faith and diminish it. Your faith is, is actually worthless. Why? Because you don't see the good thing. God, God, God is going to, part of the submissions that you begin to recognize the good thing, right? So how come when you hear the word submit, you can list 12 reasons why you should never ever do that again but you can't list one thing like if I, if I came down with the microphone which I thought about doing but then I thought well then that would be another sucker leaving the church but, but then okay but what if well, if we came down with the microphone and asked you name one positive thing that submission has produced in your life and people struggle they can't come up with the good stuff but I'm going to tell you something that almost every awesome thing you have in your life is the fruit of an uh, area that you've had submission in Matter of fact, every extraordinary act of God always begins with an ordinary act of obedience. And, and, and look, look, I mean, aren't there areas in your life you'd love to see the devil running? And I mean, aren't you tired of running from him? If he's defeated, why am I running from him? A great question. You ought to sit down and consider that. Okay, when you have the ability to make the enemy run, how? Submit to God. And that's the beginning of your resistance, okay? Because if you don't submit to God, you're not resisting him, you're embracing him. Look around the room, say, devil lover. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do it. There's that submission in, in, in work in you right there. Okay. okay, submit to God and you resist that and he flees. Why does the enemy run? Think about it. You just... Sent a, it's a, it, you've, you've crossed a threshold into a different place now. But you just told the enemy. I mean, think about what the enemy, the message that sa says to the enemy. My goodness, he will do what God says even when he doesn't want to. Even when he disagrees, he'll walk in agreement with God. So we, we can't touch him. That's powerful stuff. Can I just tell you something that you can up your ask when you're in the power position? If you would submit to God, yes, there are some things that you probably love doing that God's going to say, don't do it. Why does he do that? Ah, could it possibly be to elevate your power? I mean, God is smart. He has some wisdom well, I don't like what I'm going through right now. Sweet. Power position. I can do it God's way, knowing I don't want to, and watch the devil run. And I can ask for stuff that don't exist because God's waiting to create it. So to get the opportunity to create that which doesn't exist, he's led me into a thing that I don't like.
so that I'll do what he says even when I don't want to do what he says so he can produce what he promised like the way he wanted to produce it right from the beginning. It's like, hey, we are going to humiliate hell together because you're going to be in a situation where you don't feel happy and you're going to act like a believer and you're going to think like a conqueror and you're going to talk like... uh, Come on, somebody. Like a warrior. It it ain't going to look anything like you. It's going to look a lot like me. Not Tom. God. Jesus. The Word. Okay? And and he'll create things that don't exist. Okay? Well, yeah. you, You know... Man, you know, God does that really crazy stuff for really extraordinary people. Listen, or it's, the, it's, it's like the ordinary thoughts, you know, the, the enemy wants, well, I don't make a difference. My life doesn't matter. See, it's the ache of the ordinary that causes us to reach for things, to medicate the pain instead of to press in to find the cure to our condition. See, see, Jesus don't want you to medicate your pain. He wants you to walk in wholeness. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be empowered. He wants you to know that, hey, it doesn't make any difference what it looks like, feels like, smells like, tastes like. I know how to walk. I know how, I know how to trust God because, hey, in, more, in all of these things, I ain't just a winner. I'm more than a conqueror through him. Hello, somebody. When you do what he says, he'll produce what he promised every single day time. I like stories. You know, that, like real life stuff. So uh, would you do me a favor real quick as, as I have Dr. John, La- Dr. John Landon. Come on, John. Come on, John. <laughs> Come right out here in the middle, John. Address the, address the people. Say hello. Hello, people. That's actually a mic check. Mic check. Testing one, two. Okay. Hey, uh, we were talking about this stuff, right? And, and this story keeps coming up. And I asked John, I said, hey, uh, you want to help me out this weekend? And, and, and he said, yes. And I said, awesome. And so here he is. He's going to help me. And so there's a story. And I, and I just want you to relate it because it, it was really, it was something that uh, he, well, I'll let him tell the story. Yeah. So um, my name's John. Uh, my wife and I have been coming here for about 10 years. Um, my wife's Rachel. Most of you know Rachel. Right? She's awesome. Better than I deserve. Sometimes we need to talk about that. Yeah. Like, how did that happen? That's another story. Go ahead. <clears throat> okay, so talking about things, God creating things that don't yet exist. When we first started coming here, uh, I just had my, my first job out of college, and it was weird because I got paid once a month, but they paid us at the beginning of the month, and that was it. You didn't get another check until next month, and uh, it was hard. I mean, about the last 10 days of the month, you just run out of money and go, okay, well, do we have gas? Do we have food? Do we have you know, all the stuff, you know, checking all the boxes and make sure you're going to make it, you know? And it seemed like it was always the last couple services of the month. Pastor Tom would be talking about tithing and driving home, you know, after not tithing. My wife would be like, I really wish we could do that. And uh, I just felt bad. I felt like I was failing my family. I felt like I was failing God. And the next time at church, uh, Pastor Tom saying, just give what you have. If you can't do 10%, just start. And I was like, well, okay, God, but I only have five bucks, and I was going to take my kids to get ice cream. He said, well, are you going to trust me? You know, are you going to trust your bank account, or what's the deal? You know, you're going to have a hard time doing this God life thing if you can't trust me. I said, okay, you're the boss. And I put my $5 in, and I didn't realize at the time, but I was actually partnering with God right there. That was the beginning of it. And after church, I went to pick up. Hold on, hold on. Do you care if I interject? Go ahead. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just being polite. <laughs> um, because the, the struggle, right, and you stop me if I'm wrong, but the struggle was th- there was an argument. Because, you know, we're talking about five bucks. And, and give the five bucks. I ain't going to give the five bucks. I'm buying ice cream. I've already spent the five bucks in my head, right? It, like, like we're going to McDonald's and we're getting ice cream because I love to get, take my kids across the street. This went on for a few weeks. It, right? Say yes. Yes. This, okay. okay. This was an ongoing thing in my head, you know, just feeling like um, it's a lose-lose. You know, I'm going to not have $5 and we're not going to get ice cream, you know? <laughs> That's just where Let's I was. Let's get real for a minute. At. John needs ice cream. Okay. No, he's, he's wanting to bless his kids. And it's just like the devil, you know, to say, hey, man, you do what God wants. And look, everybody's going to pay. It's not just you. I mean, it'd be one thing, you know what I'm saying? It'd be one thing if you did what God told you to do and it only impacted you. But no, it's going to impact the wife. It's going to impact the kids. It's going to impact the whole community. And so he's afraid to, you know, he doesn't want to do it. And then what happened? Put the money in the bucket. And after church, I went to pick up my kids. And they're in class. And they're holding ice cream cones. I'm going... <laughs> What's going on? Well, they had just bought an ice cream machine for the kids, and they had it in the kids' church. Now, check this out. I know what you're going, wow, that's quite a coincidence. <laughs> no, no, you, you don't understand. We talked about doing that for like years, but there was a day, there was a day that something, this, you know, we were just in a meeting, and, and something came up, and I remember I called Todd, and I'm like, we are finding the ice cream machine, and we got to do it today. And, and everybody's like, what? And, yeah, we got to do it today, and we found one. That day, and we put it in. Now, now listen, like seven years ago when this took place, it, it, you take seven times 52 times uh, 500 possibilities, there's uh, 1,080,000 possible ice cream cone possibilities. Thankful, all brought to you by $5 out of John's pocket. No, I, I, dude, you got to get this. That there's just something, you got to get this, that there's just something as he's submitting to God and doing what God wants him to do, even when he doesn't want to, but there was a cry in his heart, and, and the cry of his heart, you know, oh, it, it was about ice cream, are you kidding me? And he's like, man, I'm going to obey God, but God, oh, I want to get my kids ice cream. God's like, got you. And, and, and so, are you going to get that money? Are you going to get that money? And God led him right up to the threshold, and he gave a $5 bill, changed the trajectory of the financial welfare of the entire body. No, it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with, no, him doing what God wants, even when he didn't want to, that was released God to do what he could only think of. And he walks around and you benefit from it every stinking service. And I had a guy last night say, okay, that's so cool, man. That's so cool. When do we get chocolate? And I'm thinking, I told Chevy, I wanted to say, when you start obeying God, God awesome or what? Yeah. There's a power position. And here's what's, here's what's crazy is that most of the time when you're being led into the power position is when you start whining instead of shining. And you're going to want to go to pouting instead of shouting. And you think you ought to be praying when really you ought to be obeying. It's so crazy. Because God's leading you into places. If you're being led by the Spirit, hello, somebody. The, those who are really the children of God, the son, the mature sons, they're led by the Spirit. Well, one of two things has got to happen. Either the Spirit led you in there, or you ain't a mature child of God. Oh, I don't know if you picked that up. Either the Spirit of God has led you in there, or you're not a mature child. If you are a mature child, you're being led by the Spirit. The Spirit knows all things from beginning to end. He's not shocked. God has never looked at you and went, oops. He, he, he knows. He declared you're in at the beginning. He knows where you're at. So if you're in a problem, how'd you get there? Hmm. See, the devil's telling you that you disobeyed. I think your disobedience adds to a lot of stuff. It's fuel to the fire. But the fact of the matter is that if you're being led by the Spirit, then the Spirit knows where he's leading you, and you're in a situation that you don't like. Why? So that you can step into the power position. 
Why don't you act like a believer instead of a whiner? Say, I love Pastor Stephen. When do we get to hear him again? Because I'm mean. I'm going to tell you what, what you have to do. And you know what? We're so far over time, and I, I don't so care. It's like God's trying to penetrate something in somebody's heart and mind this weekend. It's like, hey, man, hey, do, do you realize that I kind of know what I'm doing, and I've led you into stuff that you won't like? And, and it's not just to irritate you, but it's to empower you. Yeah. And that if you live in me and let my word live in you, you're not going to be shocked by a problem. You're actually going to look at it and say, no, I, ain't, I got a promise that's bigger than my problem. I have a God, a solution that's stronger than any storm. I have strength for all things. I'm ready for and equal to anything that comes my way. God's infusing me with an inner strength. Yeah, but people are being mean to me. Oh, quit being such a sissy and start acting like a warrior to them. I'm an overcomer. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm blessed coming in, blessed going out. God, I trust you today. Amen. Go ahead and sit down a second. We ain't done. So crazy. Acts 16, 31. Love it in the message. It says, put your entire trust in the master Jesus. Not only will you live the life you were meant to, but your whole house too. You know, you can mess up your children's lives after they leave. Just trust Jesus. Just trust Jesus. Put your entire trust in the master. Sometimes you're in a situation, you're in a problem, and you can't figure out why you're there. Could it possibly be to prove to you that you've let some of your trust shift? Just can't believe we don't have enough money. So maybe your trust has been put in money instead of the provider. I can't believe they turned the back on me. Maybe, maybe you're, you're, you're trusting others for uh, significance instead of going to God to be your strength and your comfort. Maybe he's just wanting to make a connection with you so that you can elevate, so that he can get you back in the power position. See, I don't think your life is supposed to be normal, mundane, and average in any way, shape, or form. I think every single day you have this amazing opportunity to accumulate hell, to demonstrate Satan's defeat. When you are demonstrating Satan's defeat, man, can I just tell you something? That doesn't happen, on, uh, you know, at the potluck or the birthday party. It's a war. It, 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 it's something when it slid sideways. Don't freak out. Stand up. Don't cave in. Bow up a little bit. Why? God's on my side. God's on my side. Ain't no way to do what you think God's called you to do in this community where they ain't got nobody helping you. They ain't got nobody support. Man, all you need is God. Let me pray for you. Close your book. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. That your word is alive, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. That it divides from soul and spirit. God, your word's coming alive inside of your people. God, give us a hunger, a desire to get into that word and get that word into us. And, 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 and give it the right, give it permission to change the way we live. God, we don't want to be reaching for bottles. We want to be reaching for Bibles. God, we, 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 we don't want to be making excuses for for. for cave-ins and slide-outs, but God, God, we, we want to be making headlines for resurrection stories. God, use us to demonstrate to this community that our God is alive. Miracle work in business. First act of submission, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, the first act of submission. Man, surrendering your life to Jesus. Man, I'm going to do this thing God's way. I'm not going to do it my way, so we're all going to pray a prayer together. And if you're here today and say, you know what, Tom, I'm giving my life to God today. I ain't, I ain't playing. I'm giving my life to Jesus today. I, I want him to actually change the way I think. I'm ready 
I'm going to surrender to that. So when we all pray the prayer, and I'm not going to call you out or have you stand, but when we pray this, you're going to make it your prayer if that's you. I want it to agree with you personally in prayer. So would you do me a favor? Would you just hold your hand up really high and say, Tom, that's me. I'm making my life right with God today. I'm giving my life to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's so awesome. So awesome. Matter of fact, let's just do a little bit different today. Let's just everybody stand. Let's everybody stand. Everybody in here, pray this with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know I need you, so I receive you. I know I need your love, so I call myself loved. I know I need to belong, so I say I belong. I need to be accepted. So I am accepted. I receive it today. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for setting me free. Change me from the inside out. Give me wisdom, vision, strength. I'm going to live for you every day of my life, starting now. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Come on, give God 